Hi, my name is Ray Paik. I'm the community manager at GitLab, and I have a couple of uh, guests here uh, on this session. Um, there's a community contribution that came through last week from Adam, and I'll let the participants like introduce themselves in a few minutes. And we thought this was going to be uh, relatively simple fixes on our on our web pages, and uh, Adam actually helped identify. Uh, you know, some of the problems we not only, I mean, not only identify some of the problems we had, but also help us kind of debug through the issue. So, uh, Adam, I'll let you introduce yourself and then, then we'll turn things over to Stan and we can start our conversation. Adam, go, go ahead. Sure. Um, so my name is Adam Leiter. Um, I'm uh, currently a graduate student in a PhD program in linguistics and a big fan of Git and GitLab and I use it in my work. Um, so. I had opened this merge request to just fix some typos on the website to contribute back, and that led to this um, interesting issue. So cool, yeah. So I'm showing the. I mean, there. I think there are 26 pages that you can, as you can see, and you can. I'll highlight the merge request number uh, under www.gitlab.com, uh, so people can follow along um, during the recording or afterwards. But uh, we thought this were. Um, you're relatively simple, like a typo fixes that Adam was uh, uh, generous enough to find, and it um, notice a pipeline issue that we because because of that we could emerge. But um, so first of all, Adam, like, how did you even find like I mean, did you go through all these pages yourself to find these typos, or did you run through some kind of a script to identify like these errors and documentations? Yeah, I had originally noticed just a few, just as I was kind of looking through the website and I um, decided I'd go ahead and fix those. And I thought while I was fixing just a few, I would run some of the other documentation um, things through a script. So I did end up using a script for most of them. There were a few I just caught from just browsing the website, but um, cool. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's great to have a linguist uh, <laughs> contributing to GitLab. And I think you're being, somewhat um, uh, modest here. I think you I think you told me you initially started out uh, studying computer science in university and got fell in love with linguistics. I think that's uh, I, I think so you s still kept interest in computer science or coding uh, on your side, I guess. But... Yep, that is true. All right, uh, Stan, why, I'll let you introduce yourself and then we can start continue our conversation. Sure. Uh, my name is Stan Ho. I'm an engineering fellow at GitLab. I've been with the company for close to four years now. And um, before GitLab, I was actually work. Before I worked at GitLab full time, I was contributing to GitLab in much in the same way Adam was. So uh, always happy to to help out contributors. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, I was going to point that out too. And like a lot of our uh, a lot of the GitLab employees uh, today like started out as, as contributors before joining the company. Um, so, um, so I'm going to quickly scroll through the uh, MR here. Um, I mean, you're not going to be able to see it right now, but obviously you, you submitted the MR. I reviewed them. I noticed that there was a pipeline error. And then uh, this was late in the evening. I don't think I was very helpful i just said hey adam can you fix these pipeline issues so i can merge them and i think i went to bed for 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 the for the day and uh, uh then when i woke up i saw a couple of comments from you so uh, adam tell me about like some of the uh what you noticed and some of the debugging that you had to you did to identify help identify the problem sure so the yeah i submitted the merge request um and then after a little bit of time, I got the notification that the pipeline failed and I didn't think much of it until um, your comment prompted me to look at it again, Ray. So then I did and I was kind of, I took a look at the build that failed to see what might have gone wrong. And there was this error about not being able to find the glibc, the system level C library. Um, so I did end up trying your suggestion of just uh, fixing like one typo at a time, but I was unsure if that was going to work. So um, at the same time, I was kind of like trying to take a look at some of the other merge requests because at that point I had noticed after just clicking on the general merge request tab and kind of looking at some of the recent ones going uh, down, there were a lot of them that were passing and then a lot that were just, um, or sorry, a lot that were passing and like a 
only one other one I saw that was failing. And conveniently, um, you all have these like labels. So I happened to notice that this other one that was failing was labeled as um, a uh, community contribution. Um, so I started to take a look at that. I initially sort of suspected from the error that this had something to do with the Docker um, container or the Docker image that was being used. Um, so yeah, you're pulling up the failed build. Um, and there, um, I'll let you get to it, but there was this, as I mentioned, the glibc error, like it was, it couldn't find the expected uh, library. So I thought that suggested it was something to do with the um, container that was being used for the build. But then when I was taking a look at the um, jobs from some of the other merge requests where the everything was passing, um, it looked like they had the same Docker image. So you saw the same Docker like um, image hash. And the only one difference I noticed was the one that you went ahead and just highlighted, Ray. Um, the fact that my job and then this job from this other um, community member was using this uh, WebRuby uh, 2.6 cache, whereas the, um, uh, the builds from the uh, ones that were passing were using a different cache, which was Web, uh, WebRuby 2.6-2. And that's kind of when Stan jumped in to help debug. So maybe he can take over. Yeah. And cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I really appreciated the fact that uh, you pointed out, hey, there were other like similar MRs that were failing that came from the community. I, I noticed that like the like a previous week, and and uh, obviously they didn't get to the bottom of it. And that's when I started asking for help internally. I uh, went to the Slack channel for merge request coaches, and Stan kind of jumped in and. Uh, and um, Stan one from there, but Stan, I'll we'll turn things over to you. And like, I mean, what are some of the th first things that you noticed, um, and what were you suspecting were? Well, I was just picking it where Adam had, had you know he had raised a good question about this one's two and this one isn't doesn't have it. And my first question is, where does that two come from? Because I have no idea in our GitLab CI YAML, I don't see that anywhere. And so I first asked, you know, I just was kind of in that merge request, I just asked somebody on our team, Tomas, because he's an expert on our runners, like, where does that two come from? Um, but then it occurred to me that we have this button in the and the CI CD pipelines that allows you to clear the runner cache. And I never actually had known what that actually did. All I knew is you could click that button, all the runners seem to have uh, wiped their cache and then and went about their way. So I, I, I figured it might have done, had something to do with that. So I looked at the code and realized um, in that comment you can see is this is jobs cache index. And so I thought that was actually a really smart way um, for us to implement this. All we did is we increment a number to clear the cache. So the, the runner would come in and get this number and basically append this little index to the number. So that's, that explains what Adam had been seeing. Um, so naturally, I just assumed, okay, if, if that number is two, it must have meant somebody internally clicked that button and reset the cache. And therefore, it makes sense for all our contributors to do the same thing. Uh, so I just did the naive thing and said, okay, if I clear Adam's cache, does that solve the problem? And it at least got his pipeline to pass. So that was a win. Um, at the same time, I, I think I... I decided I was going to clear, increment the cache, clear that button again by pushing that button and make our number go from two to three. And as a result, our, our, the pipelines on the main repo had the same problem that Adam had faced. So, uh, and then other people started mentioning it too, like their pipelines were failing. And, I, and then I realized, okay, we just, we just managed to reproduce the same problem uh, Adam had run into. So there's something deeper here. Uh, and then I, so instead of like just doing the naive thing, I had to go dig a little deeper and look at the actual error message and think a little bit about why that is happening. And so I think on that merge request, I started mentioning, well, it's got to be a different version. It's got to be have something to do with different operating system versions because this happens when you have a different uh, glibc version. And I think I mentioned that I, I ran the, in that comment. You can see that I tried to look at that that image that was that was failing, and it was clearly 
using, you know, I think one, uh, I think this Docker image is using version 2.24 and the, and the, 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 the pipeline failure was complaining about needing 2.28. Uh, and so I think I walked away. Uh, this is late at my night, and I think Adam chimed in. Is it actually aren't there two images here? And that was a really good insight because I hadn't I hadn't thought about that. Um, uh, so the way it works is that we in one step we build all the gems we need and we cache it, and then the cache gets uploaded. And then a different step comes along and runs our tests and extracts the cache. So you've got these two different images. If they don't match, this is exactly what happens. And Adam was dead on um, here. And so as soon as he pointed out, it became very obvious how to fix it. And so, you know, this next comment, you see that I, I run the test. You can see on the top one, um, this is the build image that actually generates the gem. It's using Debian Buster version 10, which was officially released on July 6th. But I think there was some lag time where uh, the Ruby image moved up and upgraded to this version. But I think it happened in the last uh, week or so. And then the second image is the, the image that we used to actually test the website and that's using Debian stretch. So even though it's 9.9 .9 to 10, it's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Don't let that number difference fool you. It's a significant change and it, and it bumped up the library. So that explains why it failed. You have these two different inconsistent states. So um, the way you fix it is just make them the same, right? Um, and that second image you see is the image we actually use to test GitLab CE. And we actually, pin it to Debian stretch for this reason. We don't want these you know, operating system upgrades to happen without us making a conscious uh, decision to do that. And so to fix it, you can see the next merge request, follow-up merge request is just the uh, tag um, that build image with Debian stretch instead of buster. And so you can see this, this is a really simple change. Um, you click on the changes button there, but essentially all I did is make sure that, uh, you know, I just changed the tag from slim 2.6 slim to 2.6 slim stretch and kicked off the builds and refreshed everything. And basically that fixed the problem. So what started out as a simple typo ended up being, you know, <laughs> this maze of uh, discovery. And uh, thank you, Adam, for, uh, you know, bearing with us and helping us guide us to the solution. Yeah, so I'm just like, yeah, this was like 7 p.m. Pacific time confirming that it was like late afternoon, the evening, it was still going on. Uh, I, I remember like, like after clearing like Adam and another contributor's cache, like we thought that was going to fix everything. But then uh, when that wasn't the case, I, <laughs> I was starting to get worried. Like if Sam's struggling with this, like what's really going on here? But uh, so yeah, pre I think like in, couple of crucial areas, Adam, you, you know, pointed us in the, in the right direction. Um, so that was definitely appreciated and, and uh, thanks for bearing with us. I, I think some people, I mean, tend to get kind of discouraged when things get a little bit more difficult, difficult with an MR, but uh, you stuck through it over the, over the past couple of days. So we definitely appreciate that as well. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad, yeah. glad I was able to help. So, yeah. so I mean, so like, obviously this wasn't like very, I mean, this wasn't very like evident what the problem was. If, if this had have been like left alone for a few more days, I think we would have gotten seen a pile up a lot of MRs with a lot of errors and not knowing what was going on. I think that's like an obvious impact, but um, yeah, it's, you can't imagine our website, like including our handbook gets updated very, very frequently um, with lots of MR. So this would have been really annoying uh, for a lot of us at GitLab and people in the community. But uh, so certainly appreciate that. So uh, yeah, and I'll say, you know, it's one of those things where the, all the contributors were suffering from it, you know, the, uh, people outside the company were suffering from it, but this was just right. waiting to bite us, right? As right. soon as that cash expired, and it would have expired, I think, in a week, this yeah. all would have started happening anyway. So right. um, the fact that we, we, we fixed it for Forks also meant that we fixed it for ourselves as well. So Yeah, so yeah. got got ahead of the curve, so, which is awesome, so. Yeah, and, and I mean, and that I was like, before, like, you know, I got on the phone with you last week, Adam, after this MR, uh, I was looking at, like, I mean, I think you made a first contribution to GitLab about a year ago, uh, back in August. I mean, you 
you were being modest and say it was only a documentation fix, but certainly appreciate the fact that you came back and uh, came back with a uh, MR that was impactful in a lot of different ways. So, yeah, no, like I said, I'm glad I could help and right. GitLab cool. is useful for me. So I'm glad to get back to it. All right. Well, appreciate that. So thanks. Thanks very much. Yep, no problem.